Okay. So let's remember the problem. Um, we poll n people to get their opinions, binary opinions, yes or no, about a certain issue. We assume that the people that we select have independent, uh, identically distributed opinions, such that any person uh, is um, will answer yes with probability p, no with probability 1 minus p. And our um, estimate of the um, general uh, expected value of p is simply the sample mean, which is uh, the sum of the answers that we get divided by the total population. Okay, so find approximately how large a group we should interview, how large n should be, such that the probability that the poll result differs from the true voter fraction in absolute value uh, by more than 0 0.01 is less than 5%. Let's translate that into a mathematical formulation. So, um, poll n people. Person I has opinion xi. Xi is uh, Bernoulli with parameter p. Okay, and the poll result. Poll result is summation xi divided by n. I from one to n. We know that as n increases, the poll result will converge in probability to the expectation of xi, which is p. Okay? So eventually, if you interview a very large group of people, um, our estimate will converge to the true mean, which is good. Okay? But we don't want to interview a very large group of people. We want to interview as small a group of people as possible to guarantee a certain error. Okay? Certain, uh, I mean, sufficiently small error. Okay. So, um, let's see. Now, what do we need? What, does, uh, what is a sufficiently small error? We want the probability that the poll result, which is this thing, i from 1 to n, minus the true mean, differ by um, less than or equal to 0 0.01, let's see, is at least 95%. So I rephrase the question a little bit. The probability that our estimate, this is the estimate, is within 0 0.01 of the true mean should be at least 95%. This is our reliability requirement. Okay, so I hope everybody maybe take a moment to digest this so that uh, we make sure everybody understands this before we move on. Now, obviously, as n increases, this difference will be below 0 0.01 with probability going to 1, right? That's the weak law of large numbers, remember? This thing this difference converges in probability to zero by the weak law of large numbers. Let me write that down. By the weak law of large numbers, one over n square root of xi minus p converges to zero in probability. Meaning the probability, meaning the probability that um, this absolute difference is less than or equal to 0 0.01 is converging to 1. So eventually it will go to 1. But we want to stop at 0 0.95. Okay? That's enough for us. So find the smallest value that we can stop, value of n that will stop. Where can we stop? 
is the question. So, uh, Chebyshev inequality last time um, told us that 50,000 definitely ensures this, n equals 50,000. But the, the situation is even, uh, the situation is not that bad. We don't need to interview 50,000 people, it turns out. The Chebyshev inequality is too pessimistic in this case. So we'll apply the central limit theorem. Okay, so I hope this is clear. How, how do I apply the central limit theorem? I'm going to suppose that my pole result behaves as a Gaussian. So let me write that down again. This is the probability I need. For probability that 1 over n summation xi minus p is less than or equal to 0 0.01. That's the probability. <clears throat> now, I can rewrite this as the probability that summation xi minus np, right, by multiplying, um, divided by square root of n, maybe sigma square root of n, is less than or equal to 0 0.01 square root of n by sigma. So what have I done? I divided both sides by, both sides of the inequality by sigma, which is a positive quantity. I multiplied both sides of the inequality by square root of n, which is again positive quantity and doesn't change the um, direction of the inequality. What do I gain from this? This is my z sub n. Do you recognize this as z sub n? Right. This is my z sub n normalized uh, in the way we have in the statement of the central limit theorem. So I'll say this is approximately, this is approximately equal to the probability that z in absolute value is less than or equal to 0 0.01 square root of n over sigma. Remember zn converges to z in distribution as n goes to infinity. What is z? z is normal 0, 1. Okay? So this is approximately the probability that a standard normal is in absolute value limited to uh, this range. Okay? And as long as n is large enough that this probability is around 95%, I am done. Okay? Now, um, so, we want this to be, set this to 0.95. Okay, what is the value of n such that this probability is equal to 0.95? So, first of all, what is this? Let's write it in terms of the phi function. This is 2 times phi of 0 0.01 square root of n divided by sigma. So, set this to 0.95. As n grows, this fraction will grow. This, the argument of phi will grow. The argument of the phi, of, of phi function growing will mean the phi function itself will grow. As, as n goes to infinity, this, the phi function will converge to one half. Oh, there's a negative one. Phi function will converge to one. Right. Um, I was always almost lying to you on my feet. Okay. So as as n uh, goes to infinity, phi of infinity is of course one converging to one. So this whole thing is converging to one as n goes to infinity. But we need the smallest value of n such that this will be equal to 0.95. Okay, so let's go to our Gaussian table. And let's 
see, oh, okay, well, let's first of all, um, let's see what we really need, the argument of phi to be. Um, we need phi of 0 0.01 square root of n divided by sigma to be 0.95 plus 1 over 2, which is what? 1.95 divided by 2, 90, um, Seven point zero point nine seven five. We want this. So, for which argument is the phi function equal to zero point nine seven five? Zero point nine seven five. Where am I? Huh? One point nine. Six, right? Right here. One point nine. So at one point nine oh nine point nine six, I have uh, phi reaching zero point nine seven five. Okay. So then, so then, um, zero point zero one square root of n divided by sigma should be equal to one point nine six. Okay, this means that square root of n, let's go up from here, sorry uh, for the awkward use of the board, but um, so square root of, so n is equal to um, 196 sigma squared. Now, we need an n to work for any sigma. We don't know sigma. So to the worst case would be when sigma is at its largest, when the pole situation has the largest variance. Okay, the worst case for a Bernoulli random variable is exactly sigma equals one half. So plug in uh, sigma equals one half, let's just say here worst case. We find that, I think, uh, 9,604 is the result. I didn't just compute this, I pre-computed it. Um, so uh, around 9,600 people will be enough. Okay. It's better than 50,000. So basically, this is the central limit theorem. I mean, we did a lot of writing. When you get the hang of the central limit theorem, you don't need to write a lot of stuff. Like I wrote a lot of stuff because I'm trying to explain things to you and, and, and make sure every step is explained. However, when you get the hang of central limit theorem, it's just a quick computations. It's a back of the envelope computation. So it's a um, you know tool for quickly estimating probabilities when a lot of randomness is added together. So I guess that brings us to the end of our central limit theorem discussion. Are there any questions? No? Okay, then I'll see you next time.